Welcome back guys to the MLG Columbus Major. I have with me this time Cutler of CLG. Let's just jump right into the questions. The, the game with Envious, it was, it's a really interesting game to analyze in and of itself because I, I wouldn't say, no offense, that you guys are like at your best right now. Not that you're at your worst, but they're not necessarily in a good place either. Any thoughts, first of all, on the state of your team as it currently is today? Uh, we've always kind of been like a streaky team. It's like we always go off momentum, so getting like a good half, especially on the CT side of Kabul for us, was huge. Okay, and what about playing versus Envious? A lot of people have been studying this team with Devil, trying to figure out, you know, and especially if to counterpay, like what's going on with the team. Did, did they feel different to the Envious you played in 2015? Uh, yeah, I feel like they're like a little lost. I don't know if it's just the lack of time they had with Devil, but like with Kiyoshima, is like they're always on point. A lot of with, like a lot of their strats, even though like like their strats are kind of like people say like puggy or scrimmy, but it was always like they had some kind of like formation to it. I was standing behind you guys for your T side, and not not as a compliment. Well, I guess it is a compliment. Uh, I was pretty impressed with the communications and your defaults. Is that something that you've worked on, especially with Pita or recently, to sort of stay disciplined? Yeah, I mean, he calls it like the EU style of playing. We're not like like an NA CS team anymore because I guess he thinks we're like extremely buggy. But yeah, it's like we've done like a month straight where we didn't do anything quick. We just did defaults in the beginning, and it's really paid off for us. So now what is probably going to happen is you're going to have to play well, <laughs> you're gonna have to play either Gambit or Astralis. Is there a team that you prefer to play in that case? Uh, I would say Gambit, only because every time we face Astralis, they just destroy us. I don't know. It's just like their style of play, maybe, or it's like they don't ever lose to like underdogs either. So it's like, if I want a good chance of making it two out of groups, I probably want to face Gambit. And sort of backtracking to the Cobble game, because another question came into my head: Is there anything that? was particularly useful on the T side that allowed you guys to pull ahead? Because at first it was kind of, you know, 8-7. And I know that's with the current state of Kabul, that's an all right result yeah. on CT, but is there anything that on T side allowed you guys to pull ahead so dramatically? I think the big thing for Kabul is just like drop control. Because if you get someone in drop, that means someone always has to watch it. And if you have like someone like on your team that's making plays on the other side of the map, the quickest rotate is from drop, so a lot of teams leave it open. That's probably why I end up doing so well because I go and drop, and it's just I got a lot of easy frags. Speaking of you doing well, uh, in my preview I called you like the rarest of beasts, you know, like a good uh, American support player. I know it's weird to ask players to talk about themselves, but do you think there's something to that, like the idea of being a solid support player? Uh, I think I was more support player when I was calling. Now I'm more like the hard lurker, and it's giving me a little bit more free reign of, to do what I want to do instead of worrying about supporting someone else. I mean, I still do a lot of support things on CT side, so it definitely helps our team. But as of now, it's I think just me lurking, and maybe me being able to do my own thing, it's really helped me individually. And a few other rotations or changes in the team. It used to be JDM who had a lot of big performances a few months ago. Now I noticed, I, I didn't see the stats here, but I noticed that um, I forget where, but I noticed that Tarek kind of has re-emerged with uh, strong performances. Is that something that Tarek has focused on? Like, has he? Do you think he's been hitting the DM more, stuff like that? I think he he's maybe, maybe that's a, a dumb way of putting it. But yeah, you know I, I mean. feel like he's put more time into like demo watching. I feel like he's learned a lot. I think he was very explosive in the beginning because a lot of people didn't know how he played, and then he kind of fell off. Uh, I mean, everyone gets slumps, but I think him watching demos and learning things from other players really helped him. Are you uh, expecting a three to three to one ratio of NA teams with wins today? Uh, I mean, I want every NA team to make it. Uh, it's a political answer there. Yeah, I mean, it's only one win. Anything can still happen. I mean, you got to win too. So a lot of good teams here. And. I know it's kind of hard to think about past the major, but right after this, no matter what the result, are you guys going to go straight into Malmo uh, preparations? Are you going to boot camp for that, like in uh, Sweden as you did for a game show? Yeah, uh, actually, as soon as we fly back, we have like one day off, and then we're flying straight to Sweden for a boot camp. I called that. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> all right, well, uh, thanks for your time. And I just spoke with Cutler of CLG, and there'll be more interviews from the first day of the MLG Columbus Major.